This is not a clock. Yet. To make it a clock, we need to drop the marbles into the channels in a more or less organized way. And to achieve that, the idea is to check the color of every single marble on the elevator and push away the ones that don't belong there. And to push the marbles out, I'm going to use these teeny tiny solenoids. Of course, this weren't the first choice. I first tried with these larger ones, but these are latching solenoids and I did all kinds of tests. I went all in. I made the entire 13 solenoid array. I printed plungers for them and they have depth adjusting screws and everything. But this was too complicated, wasn't working. And in the end, smaller is better. Who knew? So I've screwed the 13 solenoids into a 3D printed bracket and wired them all, which took a while. So let's get them in the clock and see if we can push some marbles. I just need to find the sweet spot for the solenoids. Centered, not too close and not too far. Just about there, I guess. Solenoids require too much power and cannot be connected directly to the controller, so I'm using relays to control them. A lot of relays. And now we have an array of solenoids that just work. They hit the marbles out of the elevator every time. But I've been carefully positioning manually the elevator to put the marbles right in front of the solenoids in every test. And that's not optimal. So here comes the next challenge. But for this one, I already prepared beforehand. When I installed the top roller with the gears, I installed this disc here with slits, seven in total that match the pitch of the elevator. So by stopping this disc always in the same position, I can position the link in front of the solenoids every time. So I think we are now ready to move some marbles. The solenoids work perfectly. They're hitting the marbles every time. But the floor is, is full of marbles. So I will try to put a, a, a stop to this mess. Give me, give, give me a second. I'd say that this mess is contained now. We can push the marbles out of the elevator and they stay in the machine, which is good. But now we need a way to know which ones to push out of the elevator so we can form the time. And this is my first attempt at that. This is an array of 26 LEDs. Half of them are just used as LEDs, emitting light against the marbles. And the other 13 are measuring the reflected light from the marbles. But the signal was too weak and I was catching a lot of noise, which made it unusable. Which brought me to the second solution. It's almost the same, but instead of using LEDs to measure the light, I was using light-dependent resistors. But I wasn't getting consistent results because, amongst other things, the light in the shop changes, so it was working in the morning and not working in the afternoon. So, so I discarded that one, too. Which brought me to the last solution. These are the sensors used in line-following robots. There are two LEDs in this that work with infrared light, one transmitting and one receiving, and there is a potentiometer that sets the threshold of the trigger. So when you reach that level, it gives you a signal that basically will mean for us if the marble is white or black. And now that I know that this is the right option, I need a bracket to put 13 of these in line and get them in the clock. So it's time for a quick ad from today's video sponsor, the new Comgrow T500. With a 500 mm cubed print volume, an all-metal hotend and hardened nozzle, it is ready for your next giant print, even with abrasive or exotic materials. And it won't take long either, as its extruder with a 6.5 to 1 gear ratio can extrude up to 30 cubic millimeters per second and move at 200 millimeters per second with 8,000 millimeters per second square acceleration. So you can get your parts fast, even with small details thanks to its three 3010 fans. The sturdy construction with internal rails on all axes, dual motors on set and Y axis, high precision stepper motors and 49 point auto leveling ensures that it prints with amazing quality every time. It only takes 15 minutes to assemble 
and it is very easy to use with its intelligent slicing software and interface that runs on top of Clipper, and comes with Wi-Fi connectivity and controllable LED lighting, so you can always keep an eye on it. Try Comgrow's T500 at the link below and use the code IVAN50 for $50 of your purchase, and now let's get those sensors in here. I calibrated all the sensors to match the difference between black and white marbles and wrote a piece of code that only rejects the white marbles. We can see now whether a marble is black or white and we can reject them if it is the wrong one. But there is one thing that we can still not see the gaps. So I'm gonna add an extra sensor bar calibrated to distinguish between marbles and gaps, and I think with this we will be able to roll some time in here in, in no time. We are using the fact that the marbles are opaque. So I'm going to install this plate in front of the sensors so the light can bounce off it. That way we will know if there is a marble between this and the sensor. Hopefully. Now that I can distinguish between black marbles and gaps, I've been trying to discard only the black marbles. But it is either not getting all the blacks or getting some of the white ones. And I've been doing tests with these gap sensors for an entire day. And, and it's not working. So I'm calling it a day and hope that tomorrow me can sort this one out. How good is sleeping? I've got an idea. What if instead of using a new row to detect the gaps, I use the existing row? Bear with me. If I get the infrared LEDs from the second row, make a bracket for them, and put them in line in front of the existing row of sensors, I can do two readings now. One with the front LEDs off to distinguish between white marbles and black gaps, and a second one with the front LEDs off to distinguish between black marbles and gaps, all in the same row. All at once. This will work. Obviously not this, because these are broken now, but, but that will work. It's working, but it's taking forever because there is a buildup of rejected marbles at the bottom tray because basically all the rejected marbles fall in front of the elevator again. So I've made this. Let, let's give this a try and see if we can do it faster. I made it shorter. The new anti-marble build-up ramp worked. What a name. <laughs> because this actually went faster. So next step, draw some numbers. This is so cool, it works! But I can continue because I, I don't have enough marbles for two entire minutes on the display. I've been discarding so many bad marbles that, that I don't have enough. I've ordered more, they will take a bit to get here, 
But more importantly, marbles get stuck when I release the gates. So any automatic change of minutes will inevitably fail. I think I know how to fix it and I will try to do it while I wait for the marbles to arrive and hopefully finish this in the next video before you know it finishes me. If you know where can I get quality glass marbles in bulk, please let me know down in the comments, please. So please subscribe if you want to know how this ends or, or, or if it ends, I guess. And that's it for this video. Thanks a lot to all my Patreons and members. Thank you. And now please go and make something!